Many biology classes use the chi-squared statistical test for their heredity units. Chi-squared can help determine if expectations match reality. The variables for a chi-squared calculation are expected values and the observed values. The observed values come from collected data and expected values are based on the expected frequencies. For this, we are using chi-squared to check if our hypothesized inheritance pattern appears to be correct. The term inheritance pattern describes the way in which genotypes lead to phenotypes for a trait. For example, if a trait is autosomal dominant, it means that the gene is not located on a sex chromosome, that's the autosomal part, and that only one copy of the allele for the trait is necessary to produce the trait's phenotype, which is what makes something dominant. For our example, we're going to look at the white-eyed trait in a fictional organism. This first pair selected is the P generation, and these are all assumed to be homozygous for whichever version of the trait they have. We need to select a cross where one individual has white eyes and the other has black eyes. For this example, we're not going to look at the inheritance of the tail trait. We'll pick two without tails. The offspring of the P generation are the F1 generation. For the F1, we have 56 females and 60 males and they all have black eyes. We record those results and then we'll select the F1 cross. The F1 cross is the cross between members of the F1 generation. The offspring of the F1 cross are the F2 generation. In the F2 generation we have 38 females with black eyes, 34 males with black eyes, 15 white-eyed females, and 17 males with white eyes. We'll record this data as well, and then we're ready to start working on our analysis. One question that frequently comes up is, do I have to separate the males and females? Uh, students want to know if they can just put all of the males and females that have um, the same version of the trait together. And the answer is that if you don't separate out the numbers for males and females, you could miss if a trait is X-linked. Uh, this, of course, is assuming that we're working with an organism that uses the XY chromosome sex determination, which most mammals do use this method, um, in addition to fruit flies, which are one of the most commonly used organisms for genetic study. However, many organisms do use different methods, um, but for the most part, when biology classes look at heredity, the XY sex determination method is the default. Moving forward, we're assuming that black eyes are dominant to white and that the gene is not on the X chromosome. We're going to represent the black eye allele with a capital B and the white eye allele with a lowercase b. You can, of course, use any notation here that you like to work through the problem. So the P generation individuals with black eyes have the genotype uh, capital B, capital B, and the white eye individuals are lowercase b, lowercase b. Each of the P generation black eyed parents passes on the black allele, and each white eye parent passes on the white allele. So all F1 individuals have one black eye allele and one white eye allele. We think that the black eye allele is dominant, so heterozygotes will have the black eye phenotype. To do the chi-squared test, we need expected values for the F2 generation. To get the F2 expected, we cross the heterozygotes from the F1 generation. For this example, we'll visualize the cross with a Punnett square. The Punnett square shows that we expect 75% of the F2 generation to have black eyes and 25% to have white eyes. We think the trait is autosomal, which means that it is not located on the X chromosome. Uh, so we expect a roughly even split of males and females. 
to get the expected for black-eyed females, then we would multiply 75%, which is the chance that an individual has black eyes, by 50%, which is the chance that an individual is female. And that is 37.5%. We expect 37.5% of the F2 generation to be black-eyed females. We expect 37.5% to be black-eyed males, 12.5% to be white-eyed females, and 12.5% to be white-eyed males. We will use these expected percentages to find the expected value that we will then use for the E variable of the chi-squared equation. First, we have to find the total number of individuals in the F2 generation, and we do this just by adding up all of the F2 results. In this example, there are 104 individuals in the F2 generation. Then we're going to multiply the expected percentages by the total. So for the black-eyed females, we take the total of 104 and multiply that by 37.5%, which gives us 39. So this means that we expect 39 individuals to be females with black eyes. In this example, uh, the results all end up being whole numbers. But if you get an answer with a decimal, there isn't any need to round to the nearest whole number. Just use the decimal for your chi-squared calculation. Now that we have the calculated expected values, uh, we have all the variables we need for the chi-squared calculation. Remember that O represents the data collected from the F2 generation. When we do the chi-squared calculation, Use the corresponding observed and expected values for a category. So for example, we're using the observed for the black-eyed females with the expected for the black-eyed females. For the chi-squared calculation, we subtract the expected from the observed, square that, and then divide by the expected for each of the categories. This example has four categories. After completing the calculation for each category, add the resulting values to get the chi-squared value. In this case, the chi-squared value is 2.2. Once we have this value, we need to use the critical value table uh, to help us interpret the chi-squared results. To find the critical value on the table, we need to know two pieces of information, the degrees of freedom and the p-value. Degrees of freedom is the number of categories minus one. Here we have four categories, so there are three degrees of freedom. The p-value is the probability that the results could be due to chance. In high school biology situations, we typically use a p-value of 0.05. Looking at the chi-squared table, the three degrees of freedom column and the 0.05 p-value row give us a critical value of 7.82. To interpret the results, we compare the chi-squared value to the critical value. If the chi-squared value is greater than the critical value, then the hypothesis is rejected. That means that observed values do not match the expected. If the chi-squared value is not greater than the critical value, then we fail to reject the hypothesis. This means that there is probably not a difference between the observed and expected. For our example, the chi-squared value of 2.2 is less than the critical value of 7.82. Based on that, we don't reject the hypothesis. This means that our expected values are statistically equivalent to the values observed in the data, and we conclude that the inheritance pattern that we use to determine the F2 generation percentages is likely to be the correct interpretation. Our final conclusion is that the data is consistent with this trait being determined by an autosomal gene, and that the black eye allele is dominant and the white eye allele is recessive.